Hey guys, it's Agustin Lerner again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to do a new video on procedural generation with Unity. We're going to be focused on the basics of a procedural generator tool that is going to allow us to create a circle with different patterns. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I have so far, which is a new project that I call Unity Procedural Patterns. We're going to have a lot of different examples in here for beginning of procedural generation. I call this scene procedural lines and it doesn't have anything other than a main camera and a directional light. So it's going to be very basic. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new C sharp script. This C sharp script is going to be handling the drawing of the procedural line. So I'm just going to call it progen line. The reason why I call it progen is because I'm using that for a lot of the procedural generator scripts that I've been creating previously for the building. So we're just going to keep that same naming convention. And then I'm going to create a new empty game object. This is going to be project line as well. And then what I'll do is I'll just drag and drop the new generator script. I'm also going to be creating a, adding a line render to it because we're going to be using the line render to, to draw the circle. So I'm going to just go ahead and move it up. And this is going to be a required component. I also want to change the width. We're going to make it param parameterized, which means that we're going to be able to change it as we you know, as we actually draw with the procedural generator. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is let's make sure that this starts at zero, zero. I want to, I want to have everything clean. So we're going to start at that point and then we also need to add a material. So I'm going to go ahead and go into material. Looks like I already had a line. So we're just going to, this is a very basic material. It's a standard material. It has an emission, which is set to, you know, to be white and then zero metallic and 0.5 on the smoothness and also specular highlights and reflections. So this is going to be used for the procedural generator line. Like I said, make sure that you have that set. Otherwise it's going to look purple like we have it. So let's go ahead and click on the element under materials and select the line. So now we're going to have a line that it's right now. It's just, you know, a basic line. The other thing that I want to do is I want to remove the positions because I want to set the positions based on the procedural generator line implementation. So I'm going to set that to zero. We're just going to start with very, very basic and then the point in on the width, like I said. Okay. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and double click, either double click on the project script, or I'm going to go to assets, open C sharp project. And then we're going to be looking at the script that we just generated, which doesn't really have much. So, couple of things that we need to add. We're going to be adding a new variable. This variable is going to be exposed. So I'm going to make it private, but we're going to make it serializable. And I'm going to say this is the radius. I'm going to start at 1.0. This is going to be serializable because we're going to be able to change it through the inspector. And I'm also going to be adding a slider. So that's what I'm using the range attribute. And then we're going to go from 0 to 10. The other thing that I want to also randomize is I want to be able to change an offset and the offset is going to allow us to create a variation of the line. It's basically going to, it's going to give us more flexibility of on patterns that we can generate through the line render. So I'm going to do another one. It's going to be a vector too, because I'm just going to be modifying the X and, and Y value. And by the way, these lines are going to be only drawn in 2D, at least for now. And then this is going to be the random offset. And then I'll just initialize it to, let's do vector to zero. That way we don't have an offset by default, but if we want to change it, we can change it later. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to specify how many points I'm going to be having in the line render. So that's going to be another variable that I create. It's going to be an integer. This is going to be just a count. So this is going to just be how many points. And you can call this however you feel like it should be called. I think for me, how many points basically tells me what it is so that works for me and then i'm going to be using a range i'm going to not i'm not going to allow zero points because then we won't see anything we're going to go from one to maybe a thousand points it's going to be a good number so the next thing that i want to also do is i don't want to draw this on every frame and we can we can do it if we want to but i'm going to allow as an option how many seconds to wait until we draw or milliseconds to wait until we draw a new a new line. So I'm going to make it also serializable. It's also going to have a range. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, let's go ahead and start at zero in this case, and we're going to go up to 10 seconds. So that way we can say, okay, you know what? On every, I'm not going to wait at all. I'm just going to use whatever the update gives me. I'm going to be, you know, 
uh, uh, as soon as the update gets executed, it's going to draw a new line. But if this number gets increased, let's say it's 0.1, now it's gonna be, you know, every 0.1 seconds, we're gonna be drawing a new line. So now what I'm gonna do is I need to name my variable. So it's gonna be a float, and then we can tell it, you know, update in seconds. That's what I'm gonna name it. And then I'm gonna do, you know, I'm gonna do it every 500 milliseconds. So we can just do 0 0.5, 0 0.5F. So the next thing that I need, I need to get a reference to the line render, and I don't have anything that tells me that that's going to be a required component. So I'm gonna make it a required component that way. If you create a new game object and you assign the project gen line, it's going to add the line render if it doesn't exist already. So I really like using this, so, so that it tells us that it's a dependency. The, the other thing that I also need is I'm gonna need a reference to that. So I'm gonna need line render, and then we're just gonna call it line render. So this is going to be used to basically set the line render. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna remove this comment. So in the body of the start method, I'm gonna say line render equal get component line render. So we're gonna get a reference to or, or line render. And the next thing that I'm gonna need to do is I need to implement the draw circle method. And I haven't implemented it yet, so that's what I'm going to be leaving it like this because we need to actually implement it. So, and then we can uncomment it after it. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna create a void method and it's going to be called draw circle. So in this method, I need to tell the system, okay, line render, how many points am I going to have? So that's gonna be the first thing that is required. We're gonna say line render, and then we're gonna tell it how many positions we have, which is gonna be how many points we have. So I'm gonna say how many points, and then we need to increment it by one, and I'm gonna show you that, because I need to actually close the circle. So I'm gonna need an extra point to, to do that part. So now the next thing that I need to do is I need to be able to loop through, and, and the reason why I need to loop through is because I need to set the points on the line render. Because right now I just have a list of points, but there's no locations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a for loop, and we're gonna say, okay, from you know integer i equals zero, and we're gonna go i is less than how many points we have, which is going to be, in this case, is going to be 100. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to increment it. So we're gonna do you know the semicolon, and then this is very common patterns of using for loops. Then the next thing that I need to do is I need to calculate the angle, right? Because we're going to be starting you know at point zero. I need to know the angle at x and also the angle at y. So we're gonna say calculate the angle. And I'm gonna make some pseudocode here so that we know. So once I calculate the angle, we're gonna need to set the, you know, if I have an offset, I want to be able to set the offset. So I'm going to also calculate the offset. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to actually set the position on the line render. So set the position on the line render. Okay. And right now there's no, there's nothing in here that is giving us, you know, a randomized, a randomized point. So when we calculate the offset, we're going to also and also apply a randomized distance. And I'll show you what that means. So the last thing that I need to do once I once we code all of these, I need to set and close the last points. And the reason why I need to close the point, if, if I don't do this, it's not going to look like the, the whole circle is closed. So I'm gonna say that the last point, calculate the last point position to close the circle. Perfect, so now we need to start with the basics. So how do we calculate an angle? And, and if you go back to trigonometry, you need to use something called math.py and then we need to basically multiply math.py times two because we need to get the whole, you know, the whole 360 degrees. So I'm just gonna say float angle. And then we're gonna use 2f and I'm gonna multiply that by my math that pi and not ping pong, let me make sure that I that I select the correct one. And I'm also going to be dividing that because I need to know, you know, for each point what the location is for that point. So this is going to be calculating the angle. So we need to say how many points, and we're gonna multiply that by i. There we go. So that should give us the angle. So now we need to get the position at x and the position at y. So what I'm gonna do to do that is I'm gonna create a new variable and it's gonna be called line x position. And then I'm gonna use my, you know, my math f dot cosine. So cosine normally gives you, not normally, but it gives you the, if I can type that correctly, let me go ahead and do that again. It gives you the, the x value. So that's what we're gonna use. And then I'm gonna pass in the angle. 
But I also want to offset it by the radius. If I do this, it's just going to give me the X position, but there's not going to be a radius. So I need to pull, multiply these by a radius. So now what we need to do is I'm going to copy that, and we're going to have to do that exactly for the Y, except that it's going to be sine so that we can get the value of Y. So I'm going to use my sine, and I'm also going to be multiplying that by the angle. So, so far, so good. And this is going to work if I were to run it. So let's say that we don't we don't apply an offset or a randomized distance, which is not going to be random at all. Then then we can draw the circle. I'm going to show you that before we before we get into randomization. So I'm just going to say, okay, now that I have now that I have my x and y position, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, line render, go ahead and grab the position at this point, which is going to be the first point that I'm looping through on how many points. So at the beginning, it's going to be zero. Once I go through here, I evaluate the next. I'm going to say, okay, increment it by one. And then, you know, it's going to go through a loop multiple times. So the value at the beginning is going to be zero, then one and two, and then so on until we hit the max. So at the value of zero, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say, okay, well, at zero, I want to set the position. And if you look at the signature of the set position, it takes in a vector three. So I'm going to say, okay, give me a vector three. I'm going to create a new vector three and I'm going to say line X position and then comma line Y position. And it's going to require a value of, of Z which, because it's a vector three. So I'm just going to set it to zero. And then that should give us everything that we need to draw a circle right now. It's not going to be random, but I want to show you the process of doing this. Okay, so now let's go back into, let's go back into Unity. And let's see what this generates. And there we go. Let's wait until it compiles. So now we have a really cool inspector with not much code. I have a radius, the radius offset how many points we're going to draw, and then the updates in second, which is not getting used right now, but it will be getting used very soon. So now let's go ahead and play and see what happens. So right now we have, you know, we have a circle, and the circle has, is, is basically drawing the circle, but then at the end we have this, this loose, loose point. The reason why we have that point is because we are only drawing, you know, 100 points, but we don't have the last point position. And that's the last thing that I need to do is I need to actually close the circle by, you know, by actually drawing, telling it what the position is. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. And there's a really easy way to do this. So what we can do is I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to paste it right beneath it. And what I'm going to do instead of using I in here, I'm going to use how many points we have. So we're going to say, so remember here we're going less than how many points. So this is going to be going up to up to 100. So if we have 101 points, we need to say, okay, now we're going to be going to that, you know, to, to that many points. So the, how many points is going to be 100. It's going to be the last point that we, that we tell the system to generate. So actually what this is going to do, this is going to go up to 99 because the max is 100, 100. And then this one is going to be position 100. So that's the last one that we draw. So, but right now we need to get the position of the, of the actual last point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, line render, I already know the position of your, of your last point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say get position, get position, and then I'm going to tell the system to get the position of the last point. So that the, actually the first point, so the first point was that, was that zero and I need to get the value of X. And then also the first point was the also get position as zero and I need to get the value of Y. And then I'm going to set the Z axis to zero. I'm going to explain this in just a second. So let me go ahead and move these down so that we have more space to see. I'm going to just resize this. So, so if we look at the, the circle that we drew, if I hit play, so now everything should work because I, I set the last position. It's a perfect circle. So if we look at this right now, there is, you know, we got to here and then we had a line that was crossing. That was the last point. That was point 0.100. So what I'm telling the system is, okay, when you get to the last point, which is the point 100, I want to get the position of the first point, get me the X and Y axis. And based on that information, I can set my last point. So the last thing that I need to do is to make sure that the circle looks good is I need to give it. So if we go back here and I need to tell it, I think it's the end cap vertices. Let's set it to five and then let's hit play and see if that looks better. And I think that looks better. So now we can get, you know, we get a perfect circle. We don't have a really a weird line at the end. So now we, that we have our circle, we need to add some randomization. And to be able to add some randomization, we're going to be basically calling something called the random, the Unity Engine that random that range. 
And I use that a lot. I, I use that a lot in different examples. And I'm going to show you an example of a procedural building that I that I created if you haven't looked at it. But let's get this done first. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to create an offset of X and also an offset of Y. And what that's going to give me, it's going to give me a randomized position that I can apply to a circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, flow, give me a flow. This is going to be the offset that I apply, and it's going to be a random offset. I'm going to say, okay, Unity Engine, give me the, let me use the random. So I'm going to use the random class, and I'm going to, I'm going to use the static method called range. So range is a, it's a very powerful method. It, it doesn't seem like it, but it's I use it, I use it quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, okay, now that I have a range, I'm going to tell the range to be, you know, to start from. So it's going to require that you specify a minimum and a max, and it's going to give you a value in between. So in between or equal to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say line, line X position. It's going to be my first, my minimum. And then I'm going to grab the line X position as well. But in this case, I'm going to be adding an offset. And so to be able to do an offset, we're going to be doing something a little bit different so I'm going to grab and I'm gonna sum so I'm gonna start from the line X position I'm gonna basically do a multiplication and I'm gonna multiply the random offset that I set above and I'm gonna grab the value of Y so now let's copy that and then use it the same for Y and there's no really perfect formula for this this is just a randomizer that I created and it worked really well so I'm gonna do the same thing for Y and Y and I'm also going to do here Y as well. And in this case, we're going to be grabbing the value of Y. So what I'm telling the system is, okay, I want, you know, I want to create an offset of, of X, also an offset of Y. I know where the line position is at this point, at this point of the iteration. So grab that point and then grab a maximum where I'm multiplying basically the line X position times X, and then I'm summing that to the value of X. I'm doing the same thing with Y starting at y, line one position, grabbing that line one position, and then basically summing the, the offset that I have right here. So now that we have that, we can we can do something as cool as just adding a new offset here. So I'm just gonna grab the offset, and then I'm going to be grabbing the offset of y as well. And, and now with these two, with you know, with these little changes, we can see something like this. Uh, let me go ahead and go back into Unity. And this is the power of procedural regeneration with Unity. It's really easy. You know, it could get complicated, but at the same time, it's, you know, you make a few changes and it just gives you some really cool effects. So so right now, that doesn't look any different, right, than we, what we had before. Let's go ahead and make some changes on, let's say we want to add a little bit of randomization of on, on the value of Y and hit play. And so now that looks different. We're getting a different pattern. So what if we change the radius? Let's go ahead and change the radius to two. Let's change the offset of y of x and y to be one and one. And let's see. So now we're getting some you know different patterns. They don't look as good, but I think it gives us some really cool, you know, some really cool effects. So let's go ahead and do 0.5 on x and 0.5 here. And what if we use less points? Let's just use 20 points. And then we hit play. So really cool, huh? Now we can do, well, what if we want to draw a triangle and see if that works? Let's go ahead and do three points. So a triangle has three points, so that, there we go. So let's go ahead and go into five points. So now we can get into some really cool, some really cool shapes. So, so that's cool and all, but I want to be able to generate that in, re in real time and be able to change those settings in real time. So that's the power of, creating tools like this, and I'm gonna show you what we need to do to do that. So remember the, the updating seconds that we created above? We also need to create an internal timer, and I'm just gonna call this one internal timer, and I'm gonna set it to zero. This is gonna help us track the time up to, we, up to a time that we reach on this variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, if internal timer has reached the updating seconds, then I know that I need to call the, the draw circle. And the reason why I want to do this is because it's going to allow us to change the, the inspector and then have it refresh automatically for us as soon as it hits the max. And then internal timer is going to be zero. We need to do an else here to increment our time. Otherwise, we're never going to reach the, the actual max. So now what I need to do, OK, internal timer, I'm going to increment you by using time, delta time. And I'm going to multiply that by by one so 
what what's going to happen is it's going to be it's going to you know it's going to check internal timer has it hit the max no it hasn't so i'm going to be incrementing incrementing have i reached the max yes i reached the max i'm going to be drawing the circle i'm going to set it back to zero and then i'm going to keep looping through and then regenerating everything let me go ahead and clean this up okay so i think that's all we need to do right now let's go ahead and go back into unity and see what we can generate and I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And this is going to be fun because now we can generate this and, and apply changes. So why is it moving? And it's it's moving because we have a random offset and we're using the randomizer to basically apply changes to the value of X and also the value of Y. So what if I change this to a greater number? You're going to see that it's going to start stretching. Or what if we don't want to do much changes on that? What if I just do a little bit of a change and what if I increment the number of points that we have? So maybe the radius needs to be smaller or the radius needs to be bigger. So you can see how that is changing. What if I want to increment this, you know, more frequently? So I can do, you know, 0.1 and we can see that it's now moving faster. What if we do 0 0.05? Now we're getting, you know, much rapid change. I can increment the points. I can decrease the points. You can see how it's shaking. I can just not add any offset at all. And that's not gonna give us any changes. So what if we do 0.5 here and then 0.5 there? And what if I increment the, the range, the radius? And you know that looks really cool if I if I change the points. If I add a lot of points, you can see how that is changing. And and you know, the, the there's really no no limits on what we can do here just with just few changes. So what if we wanted to change the value of how, you know, how thick the line was? So we can do that by just setting a property. So actually I'm going to do two properties. So one of them, it's going to be a flow and this is going to be the star width. We can just call it line star width. And then this is gonna be the width of the line when we start and I'm gonna set it, what if we set it to point, let's go ahead, go ahead and do 0 0.05F. I think that's the default that I used before. I'm gonna also make it serializable. I'm going to also make it a range. I'm gonna start, at, let's not start at zero because if I start at zero, we won't see a line. So I'm gonna start at the same value here on my slider. And then we can go up to, let's go ahead and go up to 10 and see what we get. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, but in this case, I'm going to use the N width. And the reason why I'm calling them this is because I know those are called that way in the line render. So I've been playing a lot with line render, so that's why I know those ones really well. So what I'm gonna do is when we're setting up the line render here, I'm gonna say line render, the star width is going to be, you know, line star width. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the end. There's gonna be a lot of different options on the line render, so I'll make that a meta at some point for now. I think I think this is this is okay and and with so i think i think that's everything that we need to do there let's go ahead and go back into unity and see what we get by changing by changing some of those values so now we have two new sliders that are going to control the width of the line so i'm going to go ahead and hit play and now we can play with the with the width so you can see we're incrementing the star we can also incrementing the the end so what if we do something like 0 0.1 and then 0 0.1 or we can do 0.5 and then we can do 0.5 just make it a little thicker and we can also change the radius a little bit we can also change how many points we have and you get different patterns there but if i want to make it a little smaller or make this one a little smaller there we go so what if we wanted to clone this and, and do something change something different on the other one so maybe on the other one we can make it you know we can make it a little bigger something like that we change a little bit of the width there and maybe this one will just make it more like a circle so let me go ahead and change that those values this one is going to be one one and there we go so let me go ahead and move this on the side so that we can see that we can see everything there we go so what if we wanted to clone it one more time but this time we make it smaller and this one I want to maybe let's change how many points we have here this one is going to have you know less points on the first one we can have maybe about 20 20 points let's do 20 is fine and then I'm going to change this number here and then this number here 
we can change the width as well I think it's just too thick but anyways that, that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys so you can see how powerful it is to create a, a very simple inspector that allows us to ra do randomized shapes and I'm going to be doing a lot more videos about procedural generation with unity so the last thing that I wanted to show you is make sure that you look at Twitter because I've been posting a lot about procedural generation with buildings. So if you go to twitter.com at Delmar V, you can see some of the things that I've been posting on procedural generation. Let me go ahead and find them. So you can see that I'm doing buildings with procedural generation and this is not any different to what I'm showing you right now. At the end, it's just a data structure and it just looks cooler because it's a building. But these are some of the things that I've been working on and I've been really having a lot of fun doing it. So if you guys have any questions about this, make sure that you watch my playlist on procedural building generations because it's, it's really been fun and I think it's going to teach you a lot. So if you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Thank you guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video on procedural generation with Unity. If you guys have any questions or anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.